What's going on guys? Hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend. Today is Monday, January 22nd. Um, it is 7, 18 a.m. And today I have some a couple of things on my agenda. First things first, I wanted to implement this new system that I have in mind. I'll show you guys in a second, where it just basically gives me something or a system to kind of work off of for the next like year almost. I really want to focus on systemizing everything in my life. So having systems for everything that I want to achieve. So it's just a matter of me doing, you know, so there's no unclarity in what I'm doing. But for today, I'm going to definitely get some back testing in, I'm going to get some psychology in. But I'm going to start off by reading a chapter of a book because that's something that I want to implement as a habit. Um, and the book I'll be reading is Feel Good Productivity. So uh, let's go ahead and get to it. just got done with reading a couple of chapters uh feel good productivity by ali abdo um i just took some simple notes the only really thing that really stood out to me that was just kind of new which is simply setting nice goals and i've talked about this before so what setting nice goals is the the argument that ali was simply making is that sometimes setting goals can be a little bit unproductive so say for example if you don't know how to get to the goal that you're trying to set um and let's say you set something like a smart goal which Goals that are really based around an outcome, right? And things that you really don't have no control over, right? So let's say, for example, a smart goal may be, I don't know, um, get a promotion from your job or something like that, right? There is no like definitive action of what you need to do in order to set those goals unless you take the time to write these things down. So the countermeasure to setting goals that actually help you in this book, he says it's called setting nice goals. And just basically what I always say, setting output based goals. But anyway, nice goals is just first, the first word or the first acronym and just stands for near term. So something that is, I would say far enough to give you enough time to hit the goal, but close enough to force a sense of urgency. For example, if you set 12 week goals instead of 12 year goals, right? Or 12 month goals, right? So a 12 week goal, right? That's a near term goal. And it gives you something that you can work on daily and weekly to progress towards that goal, right? And then the second thing is input based, right? So the I stands for input based. And what that basically is, is just setting goals that are based off of input. For example, if you wanted to lose 20 pounds in the next few weeks, an input goal would maybe be work out 30 minutes per day doing an exercise of your choice, right? So something that clearly states that if I do this, right, I should get this, or it'd be unreasonable if I did this every day in order to get my goals or whatever it is, right? Then the second or the third thing is controllable. And what I mean by controllable is just goals that are within your control. We as traders set a lot of goals that are not in our control. For example, you may have a goal of achieving a certain P&L for the week, right? When you know for 100% that's not within your control at all. So in this book, when it comes down to setting nice goals, it's setting controllable goals. So instead of setting a P and L goal, right? Maybe set a goal to say, okay, cool. I want to take maybe two or three trades per uh, week following my trading plan. And then the last acronym is E, energizing. Basically finding a way to making the process or the journey to get towards your goal more energizing and fun, right? How could I make working out fun. Well, you could do workouts that you would like to do. You know, you could play a sport that you like to play or whatever it is, but finding a way to make the journey towards your goal enjoyable as well too. That's it for that. Now it's time for some back testing. So I 
I just got done with the back testing session and it went well. Um, in this back testing session, I was kind of trying to figure out how I can identify market conditions to figure out what market conditions work best for me and what market conditions doesn't. Um, basically, I was working on my situational analysis for the markets and that's something that I am trying to get far better at because I believe that is the last piece of the puzzle that I need in order to be completely mastered with trading, I want to say. And then from there, it's just on all about the actions. Um, but yeah, situational analysis is the last bit of piece that I'm working on right now. So I have two things left for today. I have, um, of course, to film this video. And then I have to also get in a psychology session and hit a workout. So three things almost. But in the meantime, I want to go over the new system that I'm kind of implementing in my life. So give me one second. Last year around this time, I had bought this book. It's called a 12 week year. This book right here is by far the best book I've ever purchased. And I'll tell you why. The reason why this book was so good for me was for two reasons. One, it has so many actionable steps. Everything in this book, every page was an actionable step for at the time, the problem that I was trying to fix. And the, and the problem that I was trying to fix was just simply systemizing my life, right? Because I understand that if I can get my habits, if I can not only start performing the right habits, but then get those habits in a system, I pretty much, it pretty much will lead to success in any field I enter. So this book taught me how to kind of systemize my life. And I'm going to do a separate video on it um, because I've got a whole notion template and everything built. But I just wanted to throw this in there really quickly. If you haven't, if you're just starting the new year, this is the perfect chance to get the 12 week year. Um, it will change your, your whole perception on the new year, new me type of thing. And it will really help you build systems for whatever goals you're trying to achieve. I recommend this book to absolutely everyone. But uh, with that being said, it's time for me to go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the psychology session. So I have kind of the rest of the day to do whatever I need to. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. So I'm watching this video by Iman Trading and for a little context, I really like this live example. And this is a live example of cognitive dissonance, right? Um, so what had basically happened for context is this guy had bought right here, right? When price had break in the trend line, which once did break the trend line, but now is a wick. He had bought right here and then um, price ended up kind of reversing back on him. And instead of closing the positions, he was giving rash. He was giving himself reasons and excuses to hold on to the position longer than usual. So first things first, before he even entered the trade, I honestly don't think he planned a exit. But it was just so amazing to see how kind of price reversed. And even when price reversed and was showing no strength to the bullish side of anything, it was showing strength to the bearish side he still was finding reasons to hold on to this loss. Now, I find this kind of interesting because I've never really had the problem of dealing with this. I've always been trading with stop losses. Actually, no, I do remember an experience. <laughs> That's so crazy. I do remember going through something like this where I've lost way more than I accounted for. And it was trading Nas. I was trading 930 open, can open for Nas. And I remember praying and like <laughs> praying off hope that the price ends up reversing and going in my favor. I remember not trading with the stop loss and I think that was the day I had my biggest loss. And then ever since then, I never even tried to enter a trade without realizing where do I get out if it ends up going against me. And that's really crazy because one whole experience was not only had the ability to fix my the bad behavior that I was doing, but it also let me completely forget about it. That's kind of cool. I'm gonna get back to the session and, and uh, we'll hop back from that. 
All right, so just got done with the psychology session. I have came to terms with my own definition of what cognitive dissonance is. To me, I would like to view the idea as internal conflict between a belief that you hold of such value to the point that it determines your self-worth versus evidence in reality that is proving otherwise or disproving that belief. So an example of trading, you expect price, you have this internal belief that you are smart, right? And when price goes against you, when you fail to predict price, you don't close out your trade, you feel the sense of hope that price turns around and goes into your favor. That is where cognitive dissonance is, is a big problem because now price is challenging your belief, the markets is challenging your belief, and you are failing to address the beliefs that are harmful to your trading success. So you start to find ways to rationalize your belief against reality. Find ways to, it's like confirmation bias almost. Find ways to prove your belief right over what is currently going on in the market. So the only real ways to kind of fix this, I think cognitive disorder, is to really challenge your beliefs and look for evidence behind it. Questioning your beliefs, questioning how does each and every belief benefit you. When you are presented counter evidence that your belief isn't beneficial, it's actually being open to changing your beliefs. But that was my little summary of cognitive dissonance. As you can quite tell, I still don't have a full understanding of it yet. It's still going to take coming across the cognitive bias a little bit more to understand it. But that's going to be it for today. I am also dropping a free Discord, absolutely free. It's called, I believe, the Trader Growth Circle, where us as traders, we just come in there, ask questions, and help each other, help each other as traders grow. I'm going to put it in the link description below. With that being said, peace and love, and until next time.